Okay, hi everyone, I'm Rob and you're welcome into this edition of Whiteboard Wednesdays. Today we're going to have a look at the economics uh, curriculum first, we're going to have a look at the changes to the exam, we're going to have a look at the little bit of the project as well and just how you can navigate through the next few months uh, before you settle in to the, to the Leaving Cert proper. So, um, at this stage in sixth year, I would hope you are kind of bowling through macro at this stage. So, uh, generally you'll have kind of micro ticked off at this stage. So, obviously you have your strand one, um, you have your sustainability done, you have your demand, supply, elasticity, you have your costs here, government intervention, massive, massive question here. Um, I think indirectly there's about 12, 13 questions related to government regulation, government intervention in the 2021 paper. So make sure you have that down as much as you can. These obviously are your bread and butter of economics. So um, yes, make sure they're, um, they're very, very well known to yourself. Then you're moving on to your market structures then. Again, just make sure that they go in like a cycle from these. So last year they had a look at uh, oligopoly and a look at imperfect as well. So just make sure for this year, what you're having a look at there, you're having a look at perfect and your monopoly structures as well. So it's been two years since they came up. So that's your market structures. Definitely, definitely going to be a question on that as well. Labour market is a tough enough question. Didn't come up last year at all. So make sure you have a look at it. Now market failure was a big question that was asked last year. Um, and one of the new chapters in the book and uh, was, it was asked heavily there last year as well. So that's basically your rundown on the micro course. Again, just make sure you are, especially these three chapters here, sorry, these four chapters, there's definitely going to be at least one or two questions there. And with market structures as well, that's going to be your, uh, your bread and butter. Then at this stage, you should be working through your strand four. So strand four and strand five, there's your macro. Big, big chapters here, your national income, fiscal policy. Massive, massive questions because when you're looking at your national income again, it's what everything is is re reversed around. You have your uh, trade cycle, you have your um your circular flow of income and so on coming through that fiscal policy. When you're studying fiscal policy, will you make sure you're linking that with your government intervention? Like you can't really have one without the other. Fiscal policy and the budgetary framework. Obviously, you look at government spending and you're looking at um taxation. So how the government goes about that, how they allocate resources and so on. So huge, huge chapter. Make sure you're linking it to that one there. Employment and unemployment wasn't um, over wasn't overly asked in last year's paper. When you are studying employment and unemployment, make sure you are linking it to your labour market. Labour market is a massive, massive one that links directly to um, the, the employment and unemployment. So make sure you're studying those together. Monetary and financial sector. These two are probably the two exam, two areas that students probably stay away from. Um, wouldn't say they're overly complicated, but just the questions are quite unpredictable on it. But just make sure you're able to, especially for the monetary policy, it's the inflation. Now, inflation did come up quite a bit last year, so I wouldn't be overly worried about it. So make sure you're kind of focusing your attention on the on the financial sector there. And the very last one then, these are for your geography students. So geography students absolutely love these ones. Um, so you have your economic growth and development. Again, you're looking at your LDCs, you're looking at ODA, so official development assistance and so on. Then you're getting into your globalization. Now, globalization was asked as part of a full question last year. Um, not overly worried about this year, um, but again, it was one of the new chapters that the chief examiner did kind of hone in to see if teachers were teaching the, the topic. And from correcting it last summer, it was answered relatively well. So I can't see that being, uh, being asked again. International trade and competitiveness, based on that, it's uh, int or sorry, national income uh, fiscal policy and international trade and competitiveness. They are your biggest exam or biggest topics in macro. So make sure you know these on the back of your hand. Now, Competitiveness was asked massively in 2021 and answered very, very well. So when you are looking at that chapter, wouldn't be overly worried about competitiveness. Make sure you're all over international trade. Make sure you know your balance of payments, your comparative advantage and areas that imports, exports and what affects Ireland and so on. So make sure you know the difference between the surplus and the budget deficit, sorry, the trade surplus and the trade deficit and the effects they can have on the economy as well. So that's the one I'd be honing in on. So that's the start, if you have our notes, that's the start of that chapter, the, uh, the international trading competitiveness. Make sure a question I think come up last year was exchange rates, which was quote, which was expected. So just make sure what happens with the, the euro, the dollar and the, the pound sterling as well. Um, so that is the lowdown, I suppose, of the course. Um, yeah, just with uh, with those, and the reason you're probably going through kind of in the depths of uh, macros because your project is, uh, is a huge aspect, obviously 20% um, that uh, there will probably be 
pretty much based on uh, on one or a few of those chapters. So uh, we'll just tape over to this side of the board and we'll have a look at the uh, the changes to this year's exam. So overall, you have the exam then, so you have the short questions and then the long questions. So the short questions this year, so what you have to do is you have to do eight out of 10. So um, you're given 10 questions, you have to fully do eight of them. Now, the one thing I would do, one thing I would say to you is just based on what I've, what I've been correcting for the last six or seven years, make sure you're doing all 10 questions and you will have time to do them. Just give yourself half an hour to, to bull through them, but some of them are small calculation questions or one or two line of, of answers. So you definitely, definitely have time to do them. The only reason I'd say do 10 is because on one question, you might get stuck or you mightn't have given something that is specifically in the marketing scheme and that's the reason why um, you could get tripped up there. So make sure you're bullying out those questions, do 10, have a glance over them again and, uh, and go on to your long questions. Okay, a little bit more choice with the long questions then. So you're given six long questions and you have to do a full four of them. Now, go against what I said on the short questions. You probably shouldn't have time to do more than four questions and you're really annoying the examiner when you do more than four as well. So make sure you stick to the four. Obviously your four best questions, because you have two you can play around with, there's definitely going to be four really, really nice ones that, um, that are very specific or to what you've learned. Now, one question I'm always asked, can I get away with just studying micro or just studying macro? Maybe two or three years ago, possibly you could, might have picked up H2, not anymore unfortunately. If you saw a 2021 exam, one thing you would have picked up was the questions were basically just kind of jumbled up. So what you might have had, question 13, you had a demand and supply question as part A, there was a nice elasticity question, part B, and then there was a market failure question, part C. So again, they're roughly in or around macro. Um, there was another question then that you had uh, government intervention, which is looking at micro, then you're jumping into globalization and finishing off with competitiveness. So, the one thing that chief examiner is doing is jumping around chapters just to see did you learn them so yeah just make sure that you're not just putting all your eggs in the micro macro basket you just don't have that luxury unfortunately anymore you have to do four out of the six so there are the changes to the exam um yeah there's not much else to that again do all 10 questions here but just stick to the four here again give yourself about you'll have about 25 minutes on that and then 30 minutes per question um, on the long questions then, and you'll have five minutes to, to glance over it. Make sure what to do when you go into the exam, and probably when you're going into your mocks in a few weeks' time as well, just make sure to read through the questions. Just like put down your pen, relax. I, what I don't like seeing kids going in to do is open the exam and then start writing. Because there will be a question or two that might throw you a little bit, but you don't want that, that kind of shock to come when you only have 10 or 15 minutes left in the exam. Have a flick through it, make sure you tick off your nicest questions and then if there's a question you don't like, as you're going through the handy or short questions, something might come to you, you might have a kind of eureka moment halfway through that that will really help you through the exam as well. So just sit back for the first five, 10 minutes, have a read through the exam and then get into it. You probably will make up time here on the 25 mark question. And even you will make up time, let's just say there's a nice kind of cost question or elasticity question that's just a bit of, um, that's just a bit of calculation, like you're not gonna spend half an hour at it. So you will make up time. I've never seen an economics student or an economics exam where they were struggling to, uh, to stay within the two and a half hours. So um, yeah, so that's, the, uh, that's all you need for that one then. You're probably in the depths of your project now at the minute. So again, 20% overall, you would have received your brief at this stage. And the one thing uh, I would say about the, uh, the project is that it's actually a lot simpler than we first thought. And as, as kind of students last year, we're quite worried about it as well. But all they're really looking for, and especially in the research process, the research process is made up of, of four things. So it's, and how you'll see it marked is AEJD. So, um, so what we have there is, um, is A there is the analysis. E then is evaluation. J there is a judgment. And then D then is the data. So how you see that split up then is 10 marks for that, 10 for that. 10 here and 10 here. So basically what we're doing is the first thing I would do when I, I corrected probably over 300 of them there last, uh, last summer, but first thing I do is like, okay, where do they get their data from and is it reliable? So like your CSO website, your Irish Times, uh, Trading Economics and so on, all very, very reliable sources of data. 
I had a look at your back page then straight away to see, well, did they use much data? Now, you do get away with kind of two sources of, of, of data information. So you could use um, a newspaper article, you could use a um, kind of primary sor uh, source, you could have um, uh, interviewed someone that relates to the brief. But generally, you would have to you would have to kind of fill up, um, not fill up, but you would have to have a good bit of data to really get uh, to get proper results. So that's the data then. Now the data and the analysis obviously are linked massively. Whatever data you have on your page, make sure you're analysing it. The one thing I picked up a lot last year was students who just put a graph from the CSO website and they didn't explain it at all. So they didn't tell me well, what is going on in this graph. So basically, they might have picked up marks on the data, but lost a huge amount of marks on the analysis because you weren't analysing anything. There was a huge amount of, um, for unemployment rate, so you had the unemployment rate then kind of decreasing, and then when COVID hit then, obviously the unemployment rate increased to 16-70%, uh, higher obviously during the, the first lockdown. But then they just said, as you can see, unemployment rose. Now, like that again that's not analyzing that's just taking what you see here and putting it down so you really have to analyze it so what you can say here and this is where your kind of economic theory and economic data and um co and concepts come in is where like okay let's just say this was four percent unemployment as you can see here so this is your analysis as you can see from the above graph so this could be figure 4.2 um or figure four whatever ireland was uh, edging towards or reaching a point of full employment and then you, in your brackets, put in your definition. Full employment is a point reached where the anyone who is seeking work can find work at existing wage rates, which is in or around four percent unemployment. Like that is your that's your concept. Go on from that. However, during quarter one of twenty twenty, there was a massive increase in unemployment due to the uh, due to forced lockdowns and um, and the, the spreading pandemic. Unemployment rose from 4%, I think it was like 4.5%, up to 16%, a difference of 12% in unemployment. And that's a difference. And even in your questions, in your long questions as well, that's what we mean by analysis. Don't just say it went from 4% up to 16%. That's just dragging it down. What all we want to do is drag it down and open it up. That's what analysis means. Drag it down, went from 14 to 4 to 16 percent. There was an increase of 12 percent in unemployment. That's what we mean by analysing. So tell us exactly what's going on in your graph. Do not just lob in the graph because it looks good. Now it might look good, not going to pick up marks. So that's your analysis then. Okay, so your evaluation and your judgment are are linked just like your analysis and your data here. Your evaluation really comes into your conclusion, um, but it can direct where you're going with it as well. So like evaluating, well, what can be done or what has been done because of this decrease in unemployment? Well, unemployment increased by 12%, as we said. This has led to um, the government fiscal policy changing by increasing government uh, taxation or increasing government revenue, decreasing taxation. So that's your evaluation then. Moving on to your judgment then. What can be done, what should be done, what you think should happen in the future. So your judgment based on your data and your analysis all come into that. And you'll see it in the marketing scheme, just make sure you're having to read through it. You'll see um, how it was marked there, it was from 10 to eight, um, seven to five and so on. So this was the excellent category. This is the very good category and down um, the scale then afterwards. So again, the 10, marker there is where all of these were very very well integrated very well linked and this again all in your research process make sure it is all linked and that's the one thing to your aims your aims are the most important aspect of your whole um, project make sure your aims are strong in your introduction what you'll give there are about three or four aims but make sure you tip off each and every one of them because that's one thing we have to do when we were marking these we had to just jot the aims down on one side of the page and then as we came across them we could just tick them off so we knew you were addressing all of the aims within your research process so your aims are integral to um to these this 40 marks here and then your aims carry over then to your conclusion where again that's based out of that's on 20 marks and again to kind of in this kind of scale in this uh, category so it's 27d marks was the was the highest elite category Again, just referring back to your aims. Did you answer your aims? Did you manage to find out? Did you manage to conclude? Did you make any judgments or evaluation 
based on what you found in the research process. The research process then carrying over your aims, your aims then carrying over to your uh, conclusion. So um, that's about it. Uh, we'll have more um, content here in the day school and in the groins as well um, based on the, on the project. So we'd be delighted to see you at some point. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Best luck with the project. Best luck with your study of economics. Economics, as I always say, is the most practical and important thing you will do in school. So um, very best of luck with Lean Search and best of luck with your economic life outside of that as well. All the best. Bye-bye.